Russian infiltrators are fleeing Kherson and Ukraine has initiated the general counteroffensive in the north. And in the meantime, Russia decided to focus the majority of its attention in the east, trying not to lose key cities in this area. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. Alright, and now as promised, let's talk about soon to be rapidly developing situation in the East. And first of all, here is how territorial control was changing in the last several days. According to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainians continue their ground attacks to the east of Kupiansk, which once again does look like that they are trying to approach Svatovia from the north. And according to the same report, Russians for mainly concentrating its attacks to the west of Kremina. Because as you already know, this road between Svatovy and Kremina is extremely important logistically. And losing this road to Ukrainians will most likely mean resupply disruptions in Kremina, Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. And I know that during the last several weeks I've been talking about so many different cities. Liman, Yimpil, Belohirivka, Severodonetsk, Lysychansk, Svatovy, Kremina, Troitsky and so on. So right now, let me just try to summarize everything and make sense out of this counteroffensive in the east. To begin with, I think it is worth mentioning that the main cities in this area are Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. And as soon as Ukraine is able to liberate them both, it potentially opens the road all the way down to Luhansk. In order to take back Lysychansk and Severodonetsk, Ukraine first of all had to achieve other goals such as the liberation of Bilohirivka, Yimpil and Liman. And as you can see from this map, these goals have been successfully achieved. And the main reason for this part of the counteroffensive is that it will give Ukraine geographical advantages in its future attacks against Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. And yeah, Russians have been occupying both these cities for quite some time. And that is why they already have established resupply lines from cities such as Svatovy and Troitsky. And as you can already see, the main goal of Ukraine in the second part of this counteroffensive is to disrupt this logistics. And that is why previously Ukrainians were advancing to Svatovy from the west and now they are trying to do the same from the northwest. And now you basically can see it for yourself why Russians are trying to protect this road as much as possible. And now let me give you the same quick summary about the counteroffensive in the south and talk why Russia might give up this region without a fight. And first of all, right here you can see the changes in the territorial control over the last several days. And even though it might not look like much happened, we do have very important events to talk about. First of all, if you remember from my previous videos, Russian infiltrators in Kherson announced this civilian evacuation, which is always the prelude before they lose the control over a territory. And already today we have several reports that these Russian infiltrators, collaborators and these other quote quote important people have been spotted in Henchensk. So as you can see, which is pretty much the same what I predicted, it was not the civilians, it was them infiltrators themselves who wanted to evacuate from Kherson. In addition to that, according to this report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukraine has already launched a general counteroffensive in the northern parts of Kherson region. And while the map might not reflect these changes yet, all the facts point to the idea that Russians might give up Kherson region. I mean, just think about it yourself. The Russian military commanders left a long time ago. Now it is the Russian infiltrators who are leaving the region. And then we have reports that Ukraine is already conducting a general counteroffensive. And that is why it is my personal assumption that they might give up Kherson without a fight call it a goodwill gesture and say something like this. Oh, look at us, we are so good, we are giving you back territories. Now let's talk. And technically, this is one of the main reasons why they had to annex these four territories recently. Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporozhye and Kherson. So that whenever things inevitably go south, Russia might use regions which they don't need that much, such as for example Kherson, in order to try and keep 
keep the regions which they do need, such as Luhansk and Donetsk. And once again, these are just my personal assumptions, so feel free to let me know in the comments if you agree or not. And now, as promised, here is your very quick summary of Ukraine's counteroffensive in the south in the last several weeks. And first of all, it is pretty much impossible to ignore this massive success in the east. And two potential reasons why it slowed down recently, most likely it is because of this water obstacle and because Russians are pushing from the west. And then we have this area which was also recaptured recently by another group of Ukrainian forces. But reportedly their end goal is pretty much the same as the previous group, which is to ultimately liberate Bereslav. The third direction of Ukraine's counteroffensive was against Nihurivka. And as you can see, taking the control over this city opens you the road all the way to Kherson. And finally, the fourth direction of Ukrainian counterattacks comes from the west. And as you can see, this pretty much divides Kherson region in three parts, which makes the subsequent liberation of these territories individually a little bit easier. You can access all the maps that I was drawing today for free in our Discord. The link will be down below. And if you want to support my work, unlock some benefits and get your name featured in the next episode, please consider becoming my channel member. All the other useful links can be found to my right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, товарищи, and see you tomorrow.